Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. There's no reason to adjust your audio. I realize that I sound just like Badger from Breaking Bad. Today, in the shop, we have got a still 015 arborist saw. Uh, now, the way I came across this is it belongs to a, a neighbor of mine, an older gentleman, whose father uh, purchased it for him. I, he said back in the 70s. Um, I'm not sure exactly the age on this saw, but I, that, that's what he said. And he said he hadn't run it in several decades. Now, you may be wondering, hey, why, why do I have this here to work on? Well, first of all, I want to try to uh, bless my neighbor. And uh, if we can get this running for him, then he can uh, bless his children because he said he wanted to pass it down to him. So uh, we're just, just kind of doing uh, something fun. So anyway, I brought this in, and you're seeing it exactly the way I've seen it, uh, just with dirt and oil and, and, and stuff and all. And basically, all I know about it is that uh, it ran when he put it away, and uh, you know, he hadn't had it out for decades. So you need three things for an internal combustion engine to run. And those three things are air, fuel, and a source of ignition. So on the air, you know, we need to make sure it's getting air through a, you know, a clean air filter and everything else. But not just that it's getting air, it's going into the cylinders and it's holding air. Uh, if, you know, you have things like bad crankshaft uh, seals or uh, bad rings or whatever, you know, the, it's, it's just going to go out the other end and you're not going to be able to get it to fire. So as long as we have those three elements, and uh, the timing is, is decent, uh, this thing should fire up. And there's no reason it shouldn't be, because he said it was running when he put it away. So the first thing I would do is start to look uh, and see, hey, do we have spark? And the way I would do that on this little saw, as you can see right here, is our, uh, you know what, let me bring the camera in so you can see this a little bit. Okay, so on this saw, where you can see is the uh, plug is right back here. Because I might pull this out and uh, put the, you know, whip the spark plug and ground it and then just, you know, pull the uh, uh, pull cord on it and, and see if we have spark. It's going to be hard on this because this, this cord is so short, I do not believe, um, it, it would just be very difficult to do that. Plus, the only way to ground it would be to inside on the threads somewhere. Um, there's not like a really good unpainted surface out here. So but uh, what we're going to do is, is to check for spark, I'm just going to see if I can start this thing with uh, injecting fuel straight through the motor. Um, you know, if there's not an easy way to do that, then you can do it this way. Um, the disadvantage to that is, you know, if there's something else wrong, you could be pulling it a long time. So I wouldn't do that. If it fired right up, we're going to know we have spark. If it doesn't, we'll investigate uh, further. And there's other things you can do to, to check that. But let's go ahead and pull this off and see if... Uh, See what the condition of the carburetor looks like. Okay, it doesn't look great, <laughs> but uh, at least it has an air filter. So, um, okay, so here we are. It's probably hard to see, but um, here's your, uh, on this saw, the choke mechanism is right here. So anyway, the carburetor looks fairly, uh, fairly okay, just from what I can see right through the uh, butterfly there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is just uh, set this this little quarter throttle button just so we can run it a little higher RPM. Uh, and then what we're going to do is so I'm just going to shoot a little gas in there. And then we're just going to see if this thing will start. We make sure we have it in run. And... Uh, Let's see if we can start this thing. Oh, okay. All right, so we know it's got spark and everything else. So the question is, can we keep it running So uh, with gas in it, I'm going to still, because it's going to take a while, to uh, get that gas up here. So we're still going to prime it a little bit. Alright, so this is uh, going to be the last time I've tried this. I've done it several times, fired it several times and uh, it just won't pull fuel from the tank. But uh, we're gonna try it one more time here. I don't have a, I'm not, uh, I don't have that much confidence that it's gonna be any different, but we'll try it one more time. 
and then we're going to say it's a carburetor issue. Nah, it just keeps doing that, no matter how many times I do it. So um, let's take it back. I'm going to drain fuel, and uh, we're going to take it back into the bench, and uh, we'll start uh, taking it apart and figuring out why it's not getting fuel into the carburetor. Okay, so what we figured out here is uh, that the spark is indeed okay. Uh, it's got air, good compression. Uh, when we manually, through a syringe, put fuel manually in there, the engine fires, revs up, so uh, uh, you know we're in good shape there. So there's a blockage or something not working right, and I imagine because it sat this long, especially uh, it was bone dry the tank when I got it. I imagine we've either got some uh, you know varnish buildup on some of the jets, uh, probably especially the uh, uh, the float needle um, that lets fuel in because it feels like. A complete starvation problem or you have a, a jet that's completely blocked something like that so we're just gonna have to get in here and fix this um, and, and take a look at, at what's going on and fix the problem Okay, which one of you guys were screaming out, hey, you gotta remove this right here? Because that's exactly what we need to do. Hmm. Oh, that looks tasty. All right. All right, so we're in. There's your throttle linkage. So we are going to, uh, we're gonna clean some of this up. I'm gonna plug this and clean it up for him because this looks uh this looks pretty bad. So. Alright, so we got it back here on the bench. It's cleaned off enough now around here that we're not gonna worry about anything going into the cylinder. So uh, it's like these two screws right here. And uh this guy should uh, Come off. She's loose. So there is our carburetor. All right, what I'm going to do here is just pull a light puff of air through this line, and I've opened the cap here just to see if you know we've got any restriction. Sounds and uh, looks pretty good to me. So I think uh, we've definitely got an issue right here in this carburetor. So uh, let's start getting this apart. We should be able to hold about, see that? It's holding about seven PSI. So we're gonna turn this guy over. We're gonna check if that needle valve is releasing. So I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna keep that. And there you go. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm moving that needle valve, and that thing is still stuck at seven. That should release that 100% right away. So that needle valve is the problem. Several days later. All right, so through the uh, magic of uh, TV editing or video editing, I guess, it's now several days later, and we have the parts we need. So um, I ended up snapping the fuel line on it in several places, so uh, I had to get a replacement fuel line and came with filters and things like that, but this is really what we're looking for. This is the uh, Walbro, uh, the, the um, I think this is an HDC, I'm pretty sure it's an HDC. Uh, anyway, I think it's an HDC, um, but this is the correct rebuild kit that has everything in it. So what we're going to have to do is just go ahead and take this apart. Uh, and put it back together.
Okay, so now that we get this uh, all apart here, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this uh, out and I'm going to spray all the passages out, make sure it's really clean, and then we're just going to replace all the gaskets with the new kit here, uh, and then fix the fuel filter, put it back in, and uh, hopefully she'll uh, fire right off. So if this is your first time doing this, uh, a little tip is to just lay out your pieces that you're going to need, make sure the uh, gaskets are in the correct orientation. Uh, and this one's pretty simple, but there are a lot like um, right here, this is going to have, it, it's probably hard to tell, but you're going to have the diaphragm pump here, which is this little pliable gasket, and then there's going to be a gasket on the back. If you get that in the wrong order, it's not going to run right. So um, just make sure when you're doing this, you know, you can just uh, you know, kind of keep everything together if it's your first time. Uh, so it's easy to go back, and then what you can do is you can just take the new kit and replace each piece individually as you go in. And there we go. Tighten there. And we're on to the other side. Okay, so this wiring orientation is important because on this side, the uh, actual gasket um, hit the was on the uh, lid side. On the um, uh, on this side of the carburetor, the gasket will actually touch the body and the diaphragm will be on the lid side. So that's why you want to keep this oriented. But before we do this, we have to work on the, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, I'm not sure what this is called, valve body or something gasket. So this is gonna be a challenge. I'm, this is gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the camera off and get this cleaned up. It's gonna, gonna take a good long time since it's uh, gonna decide to peel off like that. Okay, so, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little bit of rust, but I uh, ran a wire uh, brush over it and uh, it's nice and clean. Okay, so um, we've got everything cleaned up and here's the gasket and what you can see is it's got a little tab right here, so there's no real way to screw this up. Put it on there and then that's your uh, valve body cover gasket. And then this, it's also got that same tab fit right in like that. But before we do that, we got to put the new uh, uh, float valve in and uh, all that. So let's get to that. And so what this does here is we've got this armature and this little button on the back of this armature. It's going to correspond to that spring on the back side. So I'm going to, uh, and this is where you feel like Andre the Giant holding a salt shaker. Um, so I'm going to kind of stick that right there for right this second. I'm going to grab the new needle. I'm going to slip it in here first. I'm just going to see if I can see if I can just get this in. Okay, now that was probably way too easy. So we're going to have to see. And I don't know if you can see in there, but the spring is not in the correct place, so I'm going to have to push it under. So I need a little... Oh! Okay, I believe that got it. And that works, so let's go ahead and put a couple of screws in it. And then we'll pressure test it. Okay. Let's go ahead and just, for kicks, now, since this is all new and doesn't have any fuel in it, it may leak. Uh, sometimes you have to put uh, fuel in it. Nope. It's actually leaking very, very slow. But I imagine that that's probably more because there's no fuel in here. Yep. And that drops, so let's do it again. So you can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can see this. So that's too fast of a leak down, but I'm almost sure it's because everything's dry. 
if we had um, some fuel in it, I'm sure it would be fine. So let me show you an interesting tool. This is a this is a little key, and uh, the uh, HDC is right here, which means we use this straight edge. So it's basically just straight edge. And what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to just when you put it across the thing, it shouldn't touch. But see, this one's actually touching. It means it needs to go lower. So we are going to have to. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but see it's it's below it. You can actually see it click up. So this does need to go down just a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna have to bend that armature just a hair. Okay, so I bent it just a hair, and now you can see it's pretty much. You probably can't see it, but it's just pretty much right there. So we're gonna try that. I think that's gonna work. Let's put it back together and pressure test it again. And remember this, the gasket goes to the body of the carburetor on this one, and then this is the final piece. And what this does is it touches this, this armature right there to meter fuel as the pump side's pumping it. So we're almost done. There we go, just like that. And finally, the top of the carburetor. Okay, so we're ready to throw it back on the uh, machine and then go out and uh, see if we got this thing to work. Okay, so here's the fuel line, and for testing purposes, I just kind of put something together, but um, there's a plug. This isn't just a normal fuel line. It's got a, uh, like a, like a bulkhead. That's why you have to get a line. I just did this just when I was testing it. I just repaired it. So uh, this stuff is super brittle. This is just hard as a rock. So you can kind of just see it snap just like that. So let's go ahead and uh, throw this uh, new fuel line on there. So let's go ahead and we'll just install this real fast. Okay. So the... Uh, fuel line is all put back in. Um, and a little tip here is to take your throttle linkage and connect it now. It's much easier to do. that uh, this wire goes through the back here. Just like that. We'll put these four screws in and we'll catch up outside and see if we've got it fixed. All right, let's see if we can start it.
tuning done on this when the high and low jets it runs just like it came from the factory so i'm going to go a little step above uh, for my neighbor and i'm going to clean this up sharpen the chain and really try to make it look like it was when it was brand new for him uh, so it'll look good uh, it'll look new and it'll run like new so remember it's always better to give than receive so if you see somebody that you can do something like this for you never know how much it's going to impact their life um, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and God bless everybody.